I'm Ted Meyer, and we are here in the world famous Moon Huts with Jim Payne. So you're a photographer, and you have some vision issues, which seems to be at war with each other. I'm not the idea of being a photographer with a vision issue. So why don't you tell me a little bit about your medical history? In 1954, I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, which historically uh, produces some challenges visually for people. And uh, true to form, um, when I was in my early 20s, I uh, was diagnosed with um, diabetic retinopathy, which is a complication that comes from poor management of the disease. I was a hobbyist in photography, but had never even dreamt of turning it into an avocation. And uh, that diagnosis, uh, while it initially depressed me very much and, you know, was like, okay, great, now what am I going to do? Mm. Um, quickly led to an opportunity to um, refocus, pardon the pun. So the, the project that I'm most familiar with of yours, it's, it's actually 3D photography, but you were telling me you actually don't see very well out of both eyes, right? Right. Well, not at this point. Um, initially, when I was diagnosed, uh, I went home, as I mentioned, you know, pretty depressed and like hopeless about yeah, I would. what the rest of my life was, was going to look like. And um, was really surprised when two days later, the Illinois Department of Vocational Rehabilitation called me and uh, offered to put me back through college and educate me, rehabilitate me, as they said, so that I would be able to have a career once I lost my vision. Um, for whatever reason, um, but somewhat in my nature, I instantly replied that I would spend that um, money on becoming educated as a photographer. And I Which makes perfect sense when you're losing your eyesight. Right. Well, to me, it did. It did, because my thought was, well, I'd always been interested in it. It was a hobby. And if I was going to lose my sight, I better move quick. OK. To, so to so it wasn't like a screw you blindness. It was, I want to use the time I have as best I can before I go blind. Right. It was to try to pack in as much you know, effort on photography as I could. OK. So I went off to school and you know, dove in. Um, I don't know if it was because I was now so excited and happy to be using my eyes to that degree, but um, I didn't go blind anytime soon. Um, until 1991, I went blind in one eye. And uh, after that, when I had the vision restored a couple years later through an experimental surgery, um, I could never really see in 3D very well since then. I still don't. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, by then, my, my technique for doing 3D photography was pretty developed, and I just kept going. So how do you, I mean, it's just interesting that you, you pick this 3D while possibly losing your ability to see 3D. So why don't you talk about how you, you uh, focused in on that way to present your work? I took two classes simultaneously. One was a documentary class, and the other was a class on experimental camera. I was invited to a convention. The guest speaker was a world-renowned documentary photographer named Bruce Davidson. Uh, I went, I put that portfolio of prints from my little documentary under my arm, and uh, this attractive young lady came up to me and gigglingly said, I'll show you mine if you show me yours. And we both kind of laughed and went and found somewhere to look at each other's prints. And, uh, what didn't want to be in the lobby of the hotel because there were a million photographers there and we didn't want to draw attention to our less than mature work. Mm -hmm. So we found a place sitting in a hallway at the Holiday Inn. Somebody got off the elevator and sat down next to me, started looking through the work, and he said, boy, these images are well seen, but these prints suck. And I thought, wow, that's pretty, that's pretty direct. <laughs> but they did. Mm -hmm. so. So I said, Johnny, so we, you ought to re-photograph this in color because your color works really good. Um, went to the lecture that night, and of course, he turned out to be Bruce Davidson, who was the guest speaker. And I moved that suggestion up a few notches and yeah. went back. 
was in the process of rebooking everyone I had photographed in black and white to photograph them in color. And as I went out the door to do the first photo, uh, I saw my little 3D rig and I thought, well, what if I shot this in 3D? Maybe I'll get something interesting. So I did, and I thought, you know, well, if it doesn't work out, I'll just print it in color. But if it does work out, you know, then I'll have something where I can combine those two classes. Uh, when the film came back a week or so later, and I put it in a viewer, it was like I was in the room with these people. So everything was set. The trigger had been pulled. What year is this? 1977. And when did you get the idea to start using small viewers so each one is an individual? It took a long time. It actually was almost 23 years. I was still building wooden cabinets. They're all sitting out on my patio up in Altadena. So the fact that you couldn't see in 3D got you into photography, but it didn't really get you into doing the 3D photography. I think the fact that my vision had been threatened and it had been diminished through the diagnosis of the retinopathy and the, the progression of the disease, um, one of the things that you start to do is you start to pay more attention because the threat of losing something, you start to pay more uh, more attention in, in, a, in a psychological way, um, it becomes more important to you. It becomes like you're constantly aware you could lose it. Well, you're sort of documenting a way of seeing that you couldn't really even do yourself. You... You're right. Gradually, I, I lost more and more ability to do that. And so then after I did go blind in one eye, of course, I couldn't see in 3D at all. The, the awareness that I could lose it all at any time just, you know, it became like this uh, pressure almost inside of me to keep creating more of these mm -hmm. so that even if I lost my ability to see any of them, everybody else would be able to see everybody who'd been important to me in my life that I had been able to capture. Yeah, I mean, this is a in, huge project. You've got 40 years worth of friends, family, where everybody lived, who was everyone's partner. I'm sure you have a lot of people where like they've got one partner in one picture and 10 years you went back they've got a different partner and a different dog and yes you know yep. you, so you're documenting people's whole lifespan along with your ability to see them i have my brother and his wife when they got married they were 19. wow i have them in their first home then i have them in their second home a few years later and the next picture of them in that same second home is with their two daughters and the next picture is their two daughters and some of their grandchildren so is this one of those projects you'll keep doing it as long as you can see? Yeah, definitely. I, I laughingly have said that the last picture will be uh, with the vase with my ashes in it, which will be taken by one of my sons, both of whom have volunteered to continue the project when I pass away. Oh, that's great. All right, well, thanks for talking to us. Sure. And uh, that's it from the Moon Hats. <laughs>